From the mind of Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov. This is a sound you want. What I love about tubes is this rich euphonic tone you just can't get from solid state, even in a good plug-in emulation. We're talking about true physics in the real world, not simulated calculations done in a program. Tubes add these beautiful even-order harmonics to your sound. And the second-order harmonic content is just so musical because it's exactly the same note but a perfect octave above. Then add in the higher-order harmonics, and those are even more octaves above. Stack it all together, and you don't just get a rich tapestry of tone. You get an added subtle sense of depth, which is why, despite technology's best attempts, tubes will always be desirable. And you can hear what it does for voice. It pushes the sound toward you, like it's reaching out to you, like the sound is more alive. And tubes are more dynamic. The harder you push them, the more they clip, but they do it relative to your performance. And they react more naturally to your input than a solid-state circuit that hits a clipping point and shoots out spiky waveforms from that point forth. But that soft, gentle onset of saturation that you get from increasing your variable tube gain is so desirable to the human ear. Audio technologists have been trying to replicate it for decades, which is why a tube preamp like the Warm Audio MPX, despite being inspired by a circuit design made around the time some of your grandparents were born, can deliver the kind of real tone your plug-ins just can't. 300 volts of power, 90 dB of gain. This isn't just a tone machine, but a tone cannon. And you're just hearing one of the sounds it's capable of. So I guess the overarching question is, does a tube pre like this have a place in voiceover? You bet your amp it does. What do you think? This is Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov, fading to black. <laughs>